When you look at the core capabilities you get out of NX, it boils down to task running, task caching, sharing that cache, and having a way of determining a dependency graph and letting that graph inform your task run. There's nothing of these core capabilities that is actually specific to JavaScript. But typically, NX requires a node modules to be present in your workspace and is running through NPM and that ecosystem in order to operate. And with NX plugins like our .NET and Java Spring plugin becoming more popular, we opted to invest some resources to make it so that you could make an NX workspace without it necessarily having to be a node workspace. Let's take a look. Let's start by taking a look at a typical NX workspace. We'll start by creating a workspace with the command npx create NX workspace at latest, and we'll give it the name example. I'm also going to use the dash dash preset equals empty here to make sure that we get started with an empty workspace. That is a workspace that has no other plugins installed yet and has no apps or libs created yet, no packages uh, inside of the workspace to start. Once that's created, I'm going to CD into our example repo and we'll open up code here. All right, so we're looking at our typical NX workspace and we can see there's a node modules directory here. And when we run NX from the command line, like if I were going to run npx NX list, for example, that's going to go and list all of the plugins we have available. The code that's actually running when I run that command exists here inside of node modules slash dot bin. And then inside of here, we can find the NX script. This is what's being run when we run that an X command. You can see if I were to delete all of this and have it say instead console.log hello and go back to the terminal and rerun that command, hello. So there you go. Let's back that out though. So we'll want to use actual NX later. We'll also want to go back to the terminal here and we'll run yarn add D for a dev dependency at narwhal slash react. This is the command that you'd run to install an NX plugin, in this case, the first party react plugin. If we wanted to take a look at what exactly this command did, the first clue that we have is the source control tab here that shows us a change in our package.json file. The line that was added here is to let npm know via the package.json file that there is a dependency that our workspace has on the at narwhal react package and the version number as we can see here. But where does this package actually live? The answer to that is inside of node modules again. So if we look inside of our node modules, we can find at narwhal right here. And then React now exists here. We can see this is where the contents of the package live inside of our file system. One last piece I want to point out is if we were to create an example application, here we can do npx nxg at narwhal react app example. This is the command to create a example react application inside of our workspace. And once that generator is all done running, we can run the command npx nx build example. That will go out and run our build task for the example application that we just created. And because of our task caching, we can run that save command. And rather than taking two seconds, it took 51 milliseconds this time. So what magic is happening that allows us to have this command run so much faster the second time around? Well, it's not magic, it's tech. If we scroll up to our node modules and collapse the bin, we can see there's this .cache directory inside of our node modules as well. This is what NX uses to stash all the data it needs in order to save the results of our tasks to disk. So we're able to pull the result of this build target directly from the disk instead of rerunning it and using valuable CPU cycles. So to recap what I'm trying to demonstrate here, I'm trying to show how NX is leaning on NPM for some of these things. And they're not things that we need to lean on NPM for. And we'll see how we take advantage of that later on when we create a .NET workspace that doesn't need to know about NPM at all. So first off, whenever we're running a command from the CLI, we are looking inside of node modules dot slash bin, and then inside of the NX script. Now this script is just a JavaScript file. It could just as easily exist anywhere else. We just have to figure out a way to wrap that up nicely. So whenever we run NX, we are still running this JavaScript file. The second piece is looking at the package.json file. And as we can see, there's a lot more dependencies now that we've added everything we needed to support our React application. 
but it's perfectly viable to have some other way of specifying which node packages do we depend on. We'll just have to have some other format for specifying those packages and what version they're on, and then a way of storing them that just doesn't happen to store them inside of our node modules directory. And finally, the cache. And the cache could really exist anywhere on our file system. We just happen to put it in node modules because that's convenient. There are times where that's actually not very convenient because if you are ever to blow away your node module, directory, uh, you lose your cache alongside it, which may not be what you want all the time. It may be that you just want to reset all your dependencies. You don't necessarily want to clear out the cache. So we could just put this cache somewhere else and make sure NX has some way of knowing where to look for it. So I'm going to switch gears at this point and switch over to a .NET workspace. Now this .NET workspace has three .NET projects in it. Uh, but there's actually nothing in here yet that has anything to do with NX. So because we're using .NET, I can open up a terminal and we can run the command .NET watch dash dash project equals API. Now the API project is the project that actually has the RESTful API we'd be looking to host. So I can hit enter here and .NET is going to go out and build our projects and then start up a server. And I believe we'll get a Swagger interface to play around with as well. So the command just completed and .NET started serving this web server that has the Swagger documentation for our API listed here. I can also open up Postman and we can create a new uh, Git request here that's going to go out and get our weather forecast Git request and take a look at the data coming back from that. So all this to show that our application is working as intended and there's no NX associated with our project just yet. Now I do want to bring NX into this .NET project because there's some nice features that NX could add here. For example, a project graph would be great to understand how these three projects depend on each other. In addition, NX's task caching is actually a little bit faster than the core .NET one based on our benchmarks. So for now, I'll cancel our application clear out the terminal and to initialize NX in a way where we don't add a node modules to the root of our file system here for the project, I can run the command npx nx at latest init. And I'm going to get the interactive prompt of whether I should create my workspace either in a new folder under this directory or in this directory. Now, if I select in this directory, this is a new option that we added to NX init that will allow us to do exactly what we were talking about before, which is to add a JavaScript file that's going to run the NX CLI whenever we invoke it from the command line. It's going to add a way of tracking our NX plugins and any other JavaScript dependencies we might have. And and it's going to establish a place on our file system for us to use our cache. And the result should be that we'll have an NX instance that we just run via a bash script or a .bat script if we're running on Windows. And this is great if you're a .NET developer because you probably don't want to introduce node modules in the root of your workspace if you just want to use NX but you don't want to bring Node specifically into your workspace. So we'll go ahead and run this command. And when it's complete, NX will tell us exactly what it did. So the first thing we'll notice is there's a JS file here inside of our .nx directory that was added. So if we take a look inside of here, this is actually that JavaScript file we were looking at before that's going to run whenever we run NX via the command line. Now to facilitate running NX from the command line without using the node module slash dot bin, we've actually added a NX shell script here that will run our JavaScript file and pass through any arguments to it. And the result is now I can simply call dot NX the way I would normally here I'll run the list command and that will show us all of the plugins that we have available same as it did in our normal workspace. Now there's also an NX.bat file here as well. This is actually the same exact equivalent of our NX.bash file. It's just here for Windows users to have a script to run. Next we'll take a look at the NX.json file. So the NX.json file looks like we would expect for our normal NX.json file, but there's there's an additional property here for installation. You'll notice when we generated this, it added a version here for the version of NX that we'll be depending on. For this workspace, I'll also want to add the NX dev kit and the .NET NX plugin as dependencies of this project. To do so, I can add 
the plugins property here and inside of installation then plugins we can list any npm package and version pair that we'll need for our workspace now in addition i'll also want to add a plugins property below installation and this is to specifically list any nx plugins that we'll want to include so this way nx can know to hook into this package specifically for things like being able to determine a project graph so with these things added i'll click save here and now we should be able to run the command dot slash nx graph and because this is the first time we're running nx since we added some additional dependencies inside of our nx.json file nx is going to go out and use npm behind the scenes to go and install these packages inside of our dot nx slash installation directory once that's complete, we can open up the web server that NX spun up to show our project graph inside of a browser, and we can see how our three projects here, the API services and model project, relate to each other. Remember, that is the actual API model and services project that we had in our normal .NET workspace. So the NX.NET plugin is what's informing NX how to be able to determine those package dependencies, and that's actually coming from the utilities that .NET gives us out of the box anyways. So the last step to show is the cache. So to do this, we'll need to adjust our NX.JSON file just slightly. For one, we'll have to add the build target to our cacheable operations. And for two, we'll need to add target defaults here to make sure our build depends on the build of projects they depend on. I'll save this and we'll run the command dot slash nx build API. And nx will go out and run the build of our model and services projects first. And now it's building the actual API project. And when it's all said and done, it took us about 16 seconds. However, if we rerun this command again, we can see we were able to replay it in 59 milliseconds. So some really cool things here about how we can use NX for other projects outside of just JavaScript projects. And it's super exciting to us on the NX team because this was always the vision to use NX as a generic task runner that was not specifically tied to JavaScript script in any way. It can be used here in .NET. It can be used in Java Spring. We'll have some live streams coming up in the coming weeks to show exactly this. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you can be notified when we have those live streams. Check us out on Twitter and be sure to check out the provided repository that was provided to us by Gregory, who also built all of this encapsulated functionality into NX. Gregory also maintains on the side the .NET plugin we saw in use here. So if you're a fan of .NET, be sure to check it out. As always, we appreciate all of y'all's support, and we'll look forward to seeing y'all next time.